Yes, we welcome back to another video on the Big Steph channel, and today we're here to preview Arsenal taking on Aston Villa in the second game of the Premier League campaign. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next. And so, what do you think about that first half, though, even though it was a tricky start? Yeah, I mean, it was... So yes, people, like I said, without further ado, don't forget to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you like any sort of Arsenal content. I have Arsenal fan account. I also have player breakdowns, player analysis, and manager comparisons, and also player comparisons. So if you like anything Arsenal related, any trending news, or any Arsenal transfer news, it's all here on this channel. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. But without further ado, let's get straight into the video. Arsenal will be taking on, to be honest, our bogey team from last season who took six points off of us, and that is Aston Villa at Villa Park. Now, going into this game, a lot of conversation has been around the two managers, Unai Emery and Mikel Arteta. Unai Emery, a former Arsenal manager who Arteta came after, um, who he who succeeded. And to be honest, it's caused a lot of online debate about who is the better manager in the league if Pep was to leave and all of this online discourse. I made a for, I made a video about it um, on my channel recently. So if you want to see that and want to check it out, um, link in the description. It should be anywhere up here or up here or it should be in the link down below in the description. But let me know what you guys think about the managers. To me, for me, like I said, I prefer Arteta. I prefer the style of play, the way he's transformed Arsenal, the way we've looked a better passing out of the backside, a more defensively solid side. And to be honest, a side that could compete not only in the Premier League on a consistent basis, we've now proven it for two years going into three, but it looks like we're a competitive team in Europe as well because getting to Champions League quarterfinals and losing by one goal out to Bayern Munich who had also had a tight tie after that with Real Madrid, the winners of the Champions League. Hey, listen, we, we know we can go up against Europe's best. And I think with the development of Mikel Arteta and this team, I think we will continue to see this team develop and take massive strides under this manager. But nonetheless, we're not here to talk about the managers and compare managers. We're here to talk about Arsenal and why we will get three points against Ashton Villa. Now, I did say in that other video, and I did say on the stream I was doing with some other friends of the channel, that Arsenal will keep a clean sheet in this game. Now, why am I backing Arsenal to keep a clean sheet in this game? Because I think we should have kept the we should have kept the clean sheet in the last two games. And to be honest, I don't want to blame it on Zinchenko. But when you look at the personnel options available to us now, especially at the left back position, you have to ask yourself, how do we get better in, in those two games, and how could we avoid making the same mistakes from last time? And I'd say, looking at the lineup, just looking at it with pure eyes. First of all, the goal that we conceded at Villa Park last season in the one that the away, defi um, away defeat came down Zinchenko's side. Yes, I, I, want, I don't want to fully blame the whole loss and the entire loss on Zinchenko. Yes, we conceded that goal very early and we didn't take our chances to win the game. But nonetheless, we lost that game because we conceded a goal and they didn't. So, to be honest, I'd fix that um, right hand, that left hand side, our right hand side because that's where all three of the goals we conceded against Villa came from last year so that's probably the first first thing i deal with and to be honest you're going to see it in the lineup i select and that would be right here now like i said one change i'd make i'd bring in probably during timber to that left back position because i just think one he's played more preseason minutes than a calafiori he's been in and around the team more than calafiori and we saw him get run out of minutes um last game against wolves so i just trust him to be able to take up that mantle and play a full 90 well even if it's not a full 90 we get to see some of Calafiori um I just think it's the time to see Yuri and Timber or a Calafiori coming to the team because even though Calafiori hasn't been playing with us we've seen players like Masrari from Man United come in and ultimately go straight into the team and start I know that's not really Arteta's style but Calafiori is a very physical very strong very capable defender and he's a very, very good asset in build-up. So is Yuri and Timber. So either one you put there, I'd be happy because I think both of them will get the job done. Because going up against uh, going up against a player like Leon Bailey, you're going to have to be on it 24-7. He's very pacey, very good with his trickery, and he's a very, very talented winger. So if you keep Leon Bailey quiet, so if you keep Leon Bailey quiet, then we have chances of getting all three points and a clean sheet. The so desired clean sheet that I want. But the rest of the team might go out unchanged. Going into that midfield, Thomas Partey, Declan Rice, uh, Martin Odegaard. I still think that's the best midfield three we can roll out at this current moment in time. Until we send Mikel Moreno, until we see what that looks like, then to be honest, I think Thomas Partey is the guy at the six that I trust the most because he takes the game 
starts the tempo whether slows it down or speeds it up through the lines to Odegaard to play Saka is something we've seen is very very crucial to the way this team likes to play so I'd go with Thomas Partey in the midfield alongside Martin Odegaard and Declan Rice and in the front three I'd go unchanged again Saka with the man of the match performance absolutely incredible performance against Wolves goal and assist and he's proven why he's again one of England's best players and he's one of Arsenal's for sure best players player who is consistently going for goals and assists every single game like I said every single week he's a creation monster alongside a man who's to be honest potentially changing a lot of um, fans minds about getting a striker and Kai Havertz another goal and assist for Kai Havertz and since he's become a striker I think in 17 games that's what 14 goal contributions impressive or when or is it what 14 games 17 goal contributions something like that but he's been very impressive Kai Havertz in that striker role so to be honest Kai Havertz Saka no doubt about it no discussion keep their place and if you could keep them if you could keep that form going up top for them then they're gonna be two crucial players for us this season and to be honest left hand side Martinelli is still keeping his place now there's been a lot of talk and even I myself have had discussions on this channel about Trossard or Martinelli and who we prefer in that role. Now, I know a lot of people would prefer Martinelli due to the pace and due to the um, ability to be up and down that wing. And for this game, I would have Martinelli in the squad because it's a threat we're going to need to carry, especially with Villa wanting to play a high line. Getting in behind them will be something that was going to be key. However, Martinelli must take his chances and we must see Martinelli start to put away his chances in these big moments if he's going to want to keep his start starting spot in the squad because Trossard proves every time he plays he's a leader he's gonna score or he's very very close to scoring and he's proven to be one of our best finishers at this club so like I said I'd start Martinelli but don't be surprised if Trossard could come in and do a job for us as well but Martinelli does have the pace I'd like to see and I think that would unlock this defense especially playing the high line but you guys let me know how you'd line up in the comment section down below. Now in terms of head-to-head -head record and predictions, um, the last three games for Arsenal versus Ashton Villa, Arsenal have lost two and won one. The game we did win was at Villa Park with a 4-2 victory, a late, late, late win with Jorginho scoring one out that hit off the post and hit Emi Martinez in the back of his head. And then Martinelli scores the late goal and then as Villa were pushing for a late goal in the 22-23 season. But the two losses, like I said, to Villa were two losses that, to be honest, I think we could have avoided if we defended a bit more smartly and took our chances when we had them because goals change the perspective and the temperature of a game. So Arsenal need to take their chances and not give away too many clear-cut chances to a dangerous attack in Ollie Watkins with Rodgers and Leon Bailey who look really, really good from the last win out um, against West Ham. To be honest, another team that has bought a lot of players and has very high expectations this season West Ham. So that was a good win for Villa last time out and Villa will be looking to come into this game with confidence with their tails up playing their first home game and playing a team that to be honest they think they have their number on with a manager who thinks he has his number on Arteta so this is a massive massive game for the players and the manager to be honest but what are my predictions going into this game I say Arsenal win this game 2-0 goals scored by Bukayo Saka and Martin Odegaard no no real specific reason as to why I think Martin Odegaard or Saka will score. Saka really, I guess, would just known to the mere fact he's involved with everything good coming from the squad, whether that be goals and assists or just creating chances out of nothing. But Kayo Saka is our creation monster. But the big thing about it is the clean sheet. I think if we get this, if we get the lineup right, we get the defense right. I think we have enough threat to shut out Villa at the weekend, and I think that's what's going to help us get the three points. Frustrate them to get the three points at home and to be honest it's a massive three points we need because City have Ipswich and we can't let City build a lead not even this early in the league I don't care how many games into the league title but you guys in the comment section let me know down below what you think um what do you think the result will be I predict the 2-0 leave your comments and leave your predictions in the comment section down below and without further ado don't forget to like comment and subscribe I have all sorts of Arsenal content on this channel I have fan interviews player comparisons player analysis manager comparisons and if you like any of that kind of content about arsenal or the united states men's national team hit the like button and hit the subscribe button and join the family and help me on the road to 1,000 subscribers so thank you guys for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next one peace